In this video, we're going to be talking about how learning works and then how we can use this information to help ourselves learn as fast as possible so that we can start in bug bounty or penetration testing and have the fastest road possible. I have previously shared a video on my personal study habits and what I do and when I study, and I will link that video somewhere like right around here. And you can check that out if you want to see how I personally study, but this is more along the lines of what I do when I study and what I look at when I study and how I try to ingrain these things into my memory. When I first started my PhD studies, I had to take a class very early on called How Learning Works. And in this class, we read about eight to 10 books on neurological studies and how the brain works in learning. And I'm not actually going to cover a whole lot of that, but I have my notes here. And I want to cover my notes, not in super technical detail, but on what I think are the best habits that are going to help you in learning to become a penetration tester or a bug bounty hunter. Some people, they can learn really quickly. And for others, it takes a little more effort. And actually, those who put in more effort and actually struggle to learn the information are more likely to retain it. I have a friend who was just academically gifted and could just read a book, take a test and pass it. But then in a couple of weeks, they would forget everything. And I'm still friends with this person today. And they will ask me questions like, how do you remember the stuff that we covered? And my answer to that is it didn't come easy to me. Learning doesn't come easy to me. When I study, I have to go over the same thing over and over and over. And for some reason, it just sticks with me. And when I was in that PhD seminar covering how learning works, it talks about how your brain makes neural pathways. And if you just read something once, it creates a very light neural pathway that is likely to disappear or dissipate very rapidly. But if you have to cover something multiple times, those neurons in your brain will create neural pathways that become really thick. Our instructor explained it like a dirt road. If a car just drives over a dirt path one time, it doesn't really make any tire rut. But if that path becomes like a dirt highway and it's getting driven on every day by multiple vehicles, over time, that dirt path will have really deep tire tracks in it. And that's because it's been highly traveled. And so that's kind of how learning works in our brain. When we go over something multiple times over and over and over, our brain will create neural pathways that are more likely to stay for the long term rather than dissipate really quickly. So that's kind of how learning works with our brains. I'm also not a neurological scientist. This is just what I read and from my notes. Now let's go ahead and jump into my first of my two major points. And number one is being bright is not enough. I remember that being the number one highlighted point in this seminar. Being bright is not enough. In the world of cybersecurity, there is so much information you are never going to be able to remember it all. So being really smart and being able to pass a test is not going to necessarily help you, though being smart or being able to remember really easily is going to help you in some aspects. But being able to have a discipline is going to way outdo being really intelligent or being academically gifted. Being able to persevere when you're struggling is going to be a major benefit to you. So being disciplined is going to be a major part of learning to become a cybersecurity professional. So so being bright is not enough. There are actually several books that cover this in depth on those who succeed in really difficult fields. And it kind of goes like this. They're really interested in the topic. They are willing to put in the time. And when they fail, they don't give up. And so just being really smart doesn't mean you're going to succeed in this field. In fact, it might be better that you're not just academically gifted because in the cybersecurity field, everybody that I know will tell you that one of the things you're going to have to be able to do is go out to Google and read and persevere when you're not able to find an exploit, which is something that doesn't necessarily come easy if you've been academically gifted, because those who fall into that category, they've always been able to figure out the answers really quickly. And in the world of cybersecurity, sometimes it takes days to find a specific exploit or get one to work. And being able to persevere in order to get something to work is going to come from persistence and dedication and willingness to read. And so being bright is not going to be enough to make it. So number two is how learning works. And the first thing we need to do is set up a goal. And we've talked about goals previously on this channel, but I want to talk about how goals can actually help you succeed. If you set up a goal and fail, your brain is going to have a negative effect and it's going to tell you not to do that again because it was really hard and then you ended up failing to reach your goal anyway. So I always tell people to make realistic goals or make easy or moderate level goals. Don't make some really crazy difficult goal, but really that medium level goal, not super easy because then when you accomplish it, you'll go, oh, well, that was really easy. But like something that's challenging, but not over challenging, make a goal in that area. I got it. I got it. It's all very clear to me now, Mr. Pabs. It is? Yes. I finally realized that I can't do it. I can't do it, Mr. Krabs. I'm a failure. Don't talk like that. 
act. To reach that goal, you can celebrate and your brain will actually produce a serotonin and a dopamine that tells you that that was really fun and that will encourage you to continue making goals and to continue going forward. But when you fail, your body will react with emotions such as frustrations, disappointment, and sadness. And this is a type of psychological pain that is going to be stored in your brain that's going to tell you not to do that anymore and to give up. If you're studying and you start to feel any sadness, depression, or this is just too hard, I want to quit, you should actually stop and take a break and go do something, go outside, get some sun, go on a walk, eat some ice cream, something to get you out of that state and then come back and finish studying. You can't quit after something has become really challenging. You just take a break and come back. And the reason I say to do that is because if you persist while you're having those emotions, your brain is going to store that specific object or whatever you're studying as being really difficult. And if it's something to do with cybersecurity, your brain is going to say, this is really hard. I should just quit. And then if you do quit and you don't come back to it, it's going to store that and say, you know what, there's an easy way out to just quit. Or or you can say, you know what, I'm starting to feel these emotions. I'm going to take a break and then I'm going to come back in a little bit. So that way you don't consistently experience those psychological pains with bug bounty hunting or penetration testing. So make a realistic goal. And if you start to have negative emotions, then come back later and finish studying and try to figure out and exploit. A sub point under number two is to know how you learn best. Everybody learns in different ways. Some people learn by listening. Some people learn by reading. Some people learn by doing. And then I think the best method is to do a little bit of both. Listen to a podcast or a lecture and then watch a lecture and take note and also go out and try to pull off a specific exploit. Do a little bit of all of them and that will really help ingrain things into your memory. If you just sit down and you watch tutorials all day long, that's not actually going to help you like watching a TV show. You actually need to be able to go out and practice. So in the seminar that I was in, we actually learned that you that it's best for people to do a little bit of everything, a little bit of reading, a little bit of writing, a little bit of taking notes, a little bit of listening to lectures, and then actually going out and practicing. So that's kind of going to be the best way for you to learn cybersecurity. I actually have a really long course, whether it is my EJPT course or a bug bounty course, that's going to walk you through. You're going to have lectures, you'll be able to take notes, and then you're going to be able to to practice. So the links for those are in the description if you would like to check those out. But also a way to kind of be encouraged as well is to pick one exploit and try to figure out that one exploit, whether it's a cross-site scripting, a server-side request forgery, or SQL injection, just something, and do some practice and then go out and look on live bug bounty programs just to have some fun looking at live targets and just see how things work on live networks instead of just always doing some kind of CTF. So those were my cliff notes from that seminar and if you have any ways that you think will help us learn and proceed into the world of cybersecurity faster please let me know down in the comments i love seeing what you guys write thanks for watching